in the last class we have seen the efficiency of motor and generator assuming both efficiencies to be equal okay uh, we have seen the hopkinson test its operation how to load how to operate and how to start both the machines for their operation now we know practically there can't be two machines with equal efficiencies okay because their stray losses will be different though i can to the maximum extent manage to get equal copper losses and iron losses but the other losses those are existing this mechanical losses and other stray loss components they may not be equal uh, which will make two efficiencies different okay and uh, uh, one more reason why there can be a there can be a different efficiencies because the excitation levels of both the machines are different one is uh, uh, strongly excited other is weakly excited because of which the armature currents of both the machines are different therefore getting equal armature copper losses is also not possible practically also okay so this will all make both the efficiencies of machines different from each other so this assumption whatever we have taken it is just for the sake of uh, analysis that can be done but practically the things are entirely different okay so secondly we will now find efficiencies uh, or what we can say efficiency of motor and generator calculated separately calculated separately okay the same thing we will that i1 is the line current line current drawn from the supply i2 generator line current i3 motor field current i4 generator field current okay therefore motor line current is is equals to i1 plus i2 so so this uh, i1 plus i2 is depending upon my currents what i have assigned if they are different it will be different so whatever the calculations we undertake here those are as per the current directions and currents assigned in the circuit diagram if currents are different calculations will change you should understand how to do the calculations rather than biasing these values because in biasing what will happen if you just miss one current there in the circuit diagram the entire analysis goes wrong and you won't get any marks for that you please remember okay motor armature current i1 plus i2 minus i3 okay so generator armature current is i2 plus i4 because part of armature current in generator flows in the field both are self excited okay now let rm uh, generally we assume equal resistance of both motor and generator in the textbooks they have taken it as ra which is equal to the armature resistance of both motor and generator but i am taking it separately here so that this will also help you in calculation in lab because in lab armature resistance of motor and generator will be different practically those two will be different but in all the textbooks they have followed ra equally 
I have taken separately, even in my notes, it is separate. Okay, because which will help you to understand practical uh, connections and practical relations more uh, clearly. Okay. And even in theoretical understanding, you will, will also be much better. So RAM is motor armature resistance. RAG. It is generator armature resistance. Okay. Yeah. Copper losses in generator. Copper loss in generator. Okay. So there are two copper losses in generator, two copper losses in motor. Armature copper loss and field copper loss. I cannot neglect field copper loss. Okay, because I am calculating at full load. So I will consider uh, even when the field copper losses are very much minimum, let us take into account. So copper losses in generator. One is armature copper loss. Generator armature copper loss, which is equals to I2 plus I4 square RAG and generator field copper loss. So if I know RSH, I can take ISH square RSH or I4 square RSH. of generator or simply I will be knowing V into I4. Practically also we take V into I4 only generator copper losses because I know V, I know current. So V into I4. Then copper losses in motor. Okay, so motor armature copper loss. It is I1 plus I2 minus I3 square RA M and motor field copper loss is equals to I can write it as I3 square RSHM or equals to V into I3 simply. Okay. So this is the total copper loss in the uh, machine. Okay. Now observe from the circuit diagram, like I already told, the output required to drive the load is developed by the input power given by the each machines. So the supply power received from the source is only to cater the losses. Okay. I can write here, uh, the power drawn from supply the power drawn from supply is equals to total losses in both machines. Power drawn from supplies, total losses in both machines. Okay, so total losses in both machines is equal to input voltage is V, current drawn from the supply is I1. So, therefore, V into I1 is the input. V into I1 is the input. Okay. So the total losses in the machine is V into I1. And there are copper losses in both the machines. In Swinburne's test, what we did, we deducted 
no load copper losses or no load armature copper losses from the no load input there also no load input was total loss and we got remaining constant losses because the machine was not on load the losses existing were only the iron losses and mechanical losses along with copper losses so we have studied iron losses and mechanical losses will fairly remain constant in uh, shunt machine and compound machine here also they will remain constant there is no doubt uh, whether in any test we take iron and copper iron and uh, mechanical losses will remain constant in both shunt machine and compound machine but since both the machines are loaded here the total losses will remain constant will not remain constant along with iron losses and copper losses at the load there are various other losses which are the components of stray losses so here i can get the complete stray losses the combined stray losses of the machines how to get that just by deducting copper losses from the total losses okay so here we can say if copper losses are deducted are deducted from total losses from total losses then stray losses are obtained then total stray losses are obtained total stray losses means stray losses in motor and stray losses in generator total stray losses are obtained so what are these stray losses stray losses consist of iron loss they consist of mechanical loss they consist of uh, losses in brushes they consist of losses in um, bearings magnetic losses in bearings magnetic losses in shafts magnetic losses in end plates magnetic losses in cover eddy current losses in conductor okay additional magnetic losses in teeth because of the harmonic contents in the field wave and many other losses which are not categorized under anything but still the losses will exist hence those are known as stray loss so stray loss i cannot find individual component of stray losses stray losses will be found as a whole always okay now i can get the stray loss total stray losses of the machine so i can write therefore total stray losses of mg set this is called mg set motor generator set total stray losses of mg set ws t is equals to power drawn from supply minus all the copper losses in the machine okay that is motor armature copper loss plus motor field copper loss plus generator armature copper loss plus generator field copper loss so when i do this i will get the stray losses so therefore wst is equals to this is total stray loss in mg set that is v into i1 minus armature copper loss in motor i1 plus i3 sorry plus i2 minus i3 square into rm plus 
field copper loss in motor V into I4 plus armature copper loss in generator I2 plus I4 square into RAG plus V into sorry this is V into I3 this is V into I4 okay so this is the state total stray loss in the in MG set total stray loss in both machines total stray loss in both machines but since machines are identical since machines are identical uh, we consider equal stray loss we consider equal stray losses in each machine so therefore stray loss in each machine ws is equals to wst divided by 2 so wst is the total losses in both total stray losses in both the machines because machines are identical we assume that the stray losses are getting equally divided among both the machines therefore stray loss in each machine is half the total stray loss we will consider this now we will find the efficiency of generator efficiency of generator so as per the circuit diagram output of generator is output current of generator is i2 voltage developed by generator is v because I am exciting the generator for the equal voltage as that of supply voltage. You observe here. Uh, somewhere we have written. Excite the generator using RGH until generator develops voltage applied equal to supply voltage. So the operating voltage of generator is also V. Operating voltage of motor is also V. So output power of generator is V into I2. Generator output is equals to V into I2. Okay. Then generator losses. The generator losses, I will take this as WG is equals to. So what are the different losses in generator? Armature copper loss. Plus. Field copper loss plus stray loss. One thing uh, I would like to tell you here in some textbooks, what they have done, they haven't taken the field copper loss out from the uh, stray losses. So, to find the stray loss, what we did here, power drawn from the supply, and from that we deducted field copper losses of motor and generator also some textbooks they have they haven't taken out the field copper loss from the uh, power drum okay it is with the assumption that because field copper losses are remaining constant because field copper losses are remaining constant as the input voltage is constant therefore with this assumption they are keeping field copper losses uh, they are not deducting field copper losses out of the total power draw. In that, in, in, in those some uh, literature, some textbooks, it is shown only deduction of armature copper loss from the power drawn. And here, adding only armature copper loss to this stray loss. Fine. Theoretically, this may be correct. But Hopkinson test is a practical test. It is a full load test. 
when the machine is loaded voltage will not remain constant voltage will drop okay when the machine is loaded voltage will drop therefore there is a possibility that field current may vary okay it may vary very slightly the variation may be not even 2 to 3 percent but conceptually field current will vary when the machine is loaded very very that variation is neglected okay so uh, in some cases that is also correct in many cases this is also correct so when you refer the textbooks in which the field copper losses are not deducted from the total input and calculated stray loss don't get confused don't get confused okay but in our uh, study i will follow deducting copper losses from the total input then adding them for each machine at the later stage because this is conceptually correct on load condition okay variation is very 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 minimum i can do that i i don't say that is wrong but you should know that why they have not deducted okay you can observe we haven't deducted field copper loss in swinburne's test out of no load input we only deducted no load armature copper losses we would have deducted field copper loss which one of the textbook of your favorite uh, has done local author okay there conceptually that is incorrect because machine is operating on no load there is no question of change in the terminal voltage of motor therefore field copper losses there will remain as they are there we need not to deduct okay so this are the small things which you have to observe because of the nature of the machines okay so these kind of insights uh, cannot be explained in any of the literatures this will come through analysis okay. now so when you find the books in which the field copper losses are not deducted there and not added here don't think that that is wrong this is correct or this is wrong that is correct both are correct at their places okay because variation of field copper field current uh, with respect to load is very minimum and they might have considered it has to be remaining constant that is the only reason okay plus trail loss okay wg is equals to armature copper loss in uh, generator uh, armature current in generator is i2 plus i4 into rag plus field copper loss is v into i4 plus trail loss is ws so this is total losses in generator so generator input is equals to generator output plus generator loss equals to v into i2 plus wg okay. therefore percentage efficiency of generator is equals to generator output by generator input into 100 or is equals to it is v into i2 divided by v into i2 plus wg into 100 so this is the efficiency of generator obtained through swinburne's test Okay. Efficiency of motor. <laughs> so we know the input to the motor electrically. So motor input. is v into i1 plus i2 motor losses
is equals to wm is motor armature copper loss plus motor field copper loss plus strain loss motor strain loss therefore wm is equals to motor armature current is i1 plus i2 minus i3 to rem plus v into i3 plus ws therefore motor output is equals to motor input minus motor losses second at v into i1 plus i2 minus wm therefore percentage efficiency of motor is equals to motor output by motor input into 100 equals to motor output is v into i1 plus i2 minus wm divided by v into i1 plus i2 into 100 so this is uh, the efficiency of motor obtained from hawkinson's test okay so this what we have seen so far is with the connection okay shown in this circuit diagram there is alternative connection for this hopkinson's test now the fields of both the machines are connected across their armatures across their armatures so this is forming a self excited field system in alternative connection the fields of both the machines are directly connected to the supply which may force us to believe that the connection is self a separately excited connection okay which will force us to believe that uh, connection is separately excited connection so we will see uh, what are the equations for efficiency is output and stray losses with alternative uh, connection so alternative connection for hawkinson test there is no change in the operation there is no change in the operation there is no change in the procedure nothing only the connection is different that's it alternative connection for hawkinson test Okay, so this is also known as separately connected field. Separately connected field circuits. Okay, so here we have again motor and generator. so this two are mechanically coupled only the field connection is different so 
so in this alternative connection in many books they haven't shown this switch existing implicitly they have made us understand that there will be a switch existing okay but i have shown in this uh, uh, switch switch is very much important without this switch i cannot operate so you have to show the switch so this is the field of motor this is the supply voltage v and this is the field of generator so instead of connecting this field across generator it is directly connected to the supply so this is alternative connection okay so which will lead us slightly different analysis while calculating strain losses so this is current i1 motor field current i3 generator field current i4 generator armature current i2 i will not change the nomenclature okay so current drawn by the motor is i1 plus i2 this will be i1 plus i2 okay so here it will be i1 because i2 will flow again in generator i1 will come out it will flow out here this is i1 okay this is i4 sorry this is i1 plus i4 not only i1 i1 plus i4 okay so here the operation is same so here what you see the fields of here the fields of both machines are directly connected across the lines supply lines here the fields of both machines are directly connected across supply lines across the supply lines okay so the line input current to motor is now excluding the field currents okay line input current to motor is i1 the line input current to the motor sorry not motor it is mg set not only to motor because generator is also there so the line input current to mg set is i1 excluding field current excluding field currents okay so this is the line input current for this mg set which is connected to the armatures okay so here the operation is same i have to first start the uh, uh, system by applying rated voltage uh, then we can the field rheostat uh, increase the field rheostat of motor decrease the field rheostat of generator one will uh, act as motor one will act as generator then give the speed using rhm and the rated speed is applied vary the rhg until the voltmeter across which shows zero that will same that there is no change only the change is in analytical part so here we will see okay, see here i will just put a one point uh, operation uh, is same 
as that in previous connection. So operation wise, there is no change. Okay. So calculations are done as follows. Okay. So calculations. I1 is line current. So motor armature current is I1 plus I2 is what? Motor armature current. Then I2 is generator line current. Which is also equal to generator armature current. I3. Motor field current. I4 generator field current. Okay. Uh, these two are directly taken from supply. These two are directly taken from supply. Now, because they are directly taken from supply, they will not form the part of uh, stray losses. They will not form the part of stray loss because they are directly fed from the supply. Okay, so the losses will come into picture in the MG set only when the line current is entering the MG set. So after field connections, whatever the losses are occurring, they are on the stray losses okay, and copper losses in the machine. But it doesn't mean that I should neglect copper losses of field that has to be taken at the end when calculating. Okay, that is important. So while calculating the stray losses, we will not consider the um, field copper losses of motor and generator as they are directly fed. I3 is not the part of I1. Okay, in the previous connection, I3 was part of I1. Okay, but in this connection, I3 and I4 are not the part of I1. So I1 is the line current after the field currents have been supplied directly from the source. So therefore, I need not to deduct uh, field copper losses of both the machines from the uh, total losses drawn from the input line current. Okay, that is important here. So armature copper loss in motor. Or I can say motor armature copper loss is equals to is I1 plus I2 square RAM. Okay. Generator armature copper loss is equals to I2 square RAG. Power drawn from the supply power drawn from the supply is V into I1 because line current we have taken it as I1 for the MD set. Therefore, total strain losses in both the machines. Total stray losses in MG set WST is equal to okay, power drawn from supply minus 
armature copper loss in mg set in both the machines so i can write wst as total stray losses is v into i1 minus Uh, it is I1 plus I2 square RAG plus I2 square RAM. Sorry, I made a mistake, I think. I1 plus I2 square RAM here. Armature current in motor is I1 plus I2. RAG. Okay, therefore, stray loss in each machine. Ws is equals to Ws total divided by 2. Okay. Motor efficiency. So motor input. Now here we should be cautious. I1 is the line current drawn by the MG set. Okay. So okay. if I consider the line current from the supply I1, the armature current is I1 plus I2. So armature is not the only part in the machine. Even we have field. So motor input is equal to armature input plus field input. This is the change in the analysis. Armature input plus field input. So the total input to the motor is V into I1 plus I2 plus V into I3. So that I will write it as V into I1 plus I2 plus I3. The current I3 is directly drawn from the supply. Now it is not part, is the part of I1, unlike the previous connection. Okay, that you should observe the change here. Then motor losses. Motor losses, WM is equal to. Motor armature copper loss. Yes. Plus motor field copper loss plus motor stray loss. So WM is equal to I can write I1 plus I2 square RAM. plus V into I3 plus WS. Therefore, motor output is equals to motor input minus motor loss. So this is V into I1 plus I2 plus I3 minus WM. Therefore, 
direct level write the efficiency now. Therefore, percentage efficiency is equals to motor output is V into I1 plus I2 plus I3 minus WM divided by V into I1 plus I2 plus I3 into 100. So this is motor efficiency using alternative connections. Next, we'll find generator efficiency. Okay. So we will be knowing the generator output, right? So generator output is equals to V into I2. Generator loss is generator armature copper loss plus generator field copper loss plus generator stray loss. So WG is equals to I2 square RAG plus V into I4 plus WS. Therefore, generator input is generator output plus generator loss. Is equals to V into I2 plus I2 square RAG plus V into I4 plus WS. Therefore, percentage efficiency of generator is equals to direct level, right? Output is V into I2 divided by input is V into I2 plus uh, I2 square RAG. Sorry, this is what generator input plus generator loss, right? Yeah, this I will write it as V into I2 plus WG. This is one additional step. Now here I will write V into I2 plus WG is sufficient. Okay, into 100. So this is the efficiency of generator using alternative connections. So slightly the values may change when we practically conduct this and see whether we are getting the same values or not. Till then, uh, uh, it is difficult to say. Okay. Now, any doubt so far? No. So then we'll see advantages and disadvantages. So the biggest advantage is that power required for testing is very small, even though the machines are on full load. Okay. Even though the machines are on full load, power required for testing is very small as the power drawn for the from the supply is only to the amount of losses. Okay, so here uh, power for testing is less. Power for testing is less as only the amount of losses are drawn from the supply. Required output power is developed by the motors with back to back connections only. Now, second advantage is that because the machines are operated on full load, we can study about temperature rise and commutation. Okay. Temperature rise and commutation can be observed. Commutation is one of the important 
phenomena to be observed in DC machines. Can be observed. This we can't do in Swinburne's test because it is no load test. Temperature rise and commutation we cannot find out. Even armature reaction. Okay. Uh, commutation will include armature reaction because the effect of armature reaction is on commutation only. There will be the shift in the brush positions because the brushes are fixed to the stators. There will be a reverse drift of the rotor in case of DC machines due to armature reaction. Okay. Now, because the machine is loaded, the change in ion losses due to flux distortion can be observed. Okay. As machine is loaded, change in ion loss due to flux distortion can be evaluated. Okay, so these are the major advantages. Disadvantage is initial cost is high. That is only disadvantage. Okay. Cost is high as we use two machines. Okay. Two identical machines. That is important. Suppose I want to develop a motor for a dedicated application. And if I want to test it using Hopkinson test, I should be developing a generator of the same capacity only for the sake of testing. So therefore, initial cost will be high if this test is employed for the uh, specific application motors. For general purpose motors, no issues. Identical machines, plenty identical machines we will get. So for general purpose motors, or general purpose generators, this test is very much useful because two machines can be tested at once. That is one advantage. But for special purpose uh, uh, machines, uh, this is very costly affair. Okay, so with this, uh, the analytical part of uh, uh, Hopkinson test we have seen. Okay, so in the next session of the lecture we will solve few examples on Hopkinson test then we'll move to the next type